afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Q&A Wednesday, and I'm Dr. John Belkowitz, excited to answer your concrete questions or concrete concerns. Our question today is from Dave, one high voltage one. I don't know the question. What is the difference between the hydration stabilizer and a set retarder? Go on. Is their relationship like high-range water reducer and super plasticizers. No! <clears throat> Let me read you the definition from ACICT, I think it was 18, so this is the American Concrete Institute, uh, definition of a super plasticizer. Super plasticizer. C, high-range water reducer. Okay, can you give yours? So this is from the Portland Cement Association, what is the definition for super plasticizer? Super plasticizers, also known as plasticizers or high range water reducers. So, one high voltage one, a super plasticizer is commonly known by two of uh, national organizations, really is a high range water reducer. So, it's technically the same thing. And a set retarder and a hydration stabilizer are not the same thing. Okay, sorry. You know, with these definitions, the set retarder, the hydration stabilizer, it's kind of like the definition of viscosity. If I say the viscosity increased, I actually have to say in my head, viscosity means the resistance to lateral shear. So uh, with a set retarder, if we have our, so let's say this is our temperature on the y-axis, our time on the x-axis, uh, a temperature of hydration curve often looks like this, right? Where we have our initial mixing phase, then we have a dormancy period, our acceleration phase, our deceleration phase, and then our densification phase. What a set retarder is going to do, it's, it's not going to do anything to that curve height-wise, changing it, maybe the energy under the curve or the, 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 the geometry of the curve. It's just going to take that curve and it's going to push it back. It's going to retard or delay that curve, effectively opening up that dormancy period to make placing the concrete or giving us more time to place the concrete. A hydration stabilizer does just that. It stabilizes the hydration. So if we have our temperature versus time, if here's our curve, and it, it's, it's really maxing out the temperature that we want, especially for thermal shock, thermal shrinkage, or changes, volume changes, and thermal cracking, what we want to do is take that same hydration curve, we really want to stabilize the temperature so we're not running into that case of you know, the maximum differential between our ambient and our hydrating concrete to induce that thermal shock. And in doing so, by pushing down that curve, you might lose some earlier strengths, but ultimately we're fattening up that curve. We're not losing energy. In some cases, we're giving ourselves a better later strength by stabilizing that hydration. So one high voltage one. Hopefully we answer that question. Let us know if you got any other concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go, go, go! Beat asshole!